Welcome to the virtual open house of the School of Computer and Communication Sciences at EPFL. The purpose of this event is to communicate to you what it's like to be here and do research here in our school. In this presentation, I will give you a brief overview of our PhD program. In the same channel, you will find presentations prepared by IC faculty and PhD students um, in order to give you a sense of the kinds of problems that they like to work on and how they tend to approach these problems. You will also find videos about life in Lausanne and Switzerland in general. Finally, you will have several one-on-one -on -one meetings with IC faculty members, and I strongly encourage you to ask as much as you can in order to answer this one most important question in your life right now. Is EPFL the right place for you? Is this the place and are these the people with whom you will be happiest and you will do your best work? The first important question about a PhD thesis is the area, the topic. In our school, we do research on a variety of topics that range from theoretical computer science and human-computer interaction all the way to systems and machine learning and artificial intelligence. But I strongly encourage you to look beyond these labels and try to identify specific people that you would like to work with and specific types of problems that you would like to solve. Another important question is how interesting, how diverse is the environment where somebody does their PhD. In our school, students come from all over the world. About a quarter are from Switzerland, about 40% from other European countries, 30% from Asia, 4% from the Americas, and about 1% from Africa. What you cannot see in this picture is the trend, which is toward more and more diversity, which is great because more diversity leads to a more intellectually stimulating environment. Then there is the question of the relationship between the PhD and the rest of the world. What is the interaction with the industry and with other research institutions? In our program, PhD students do have the option to do uh, internships, but they're in no way forced to. We do not depend on industry in any way, but we can use it as inspiration for the problems that we solve. When our students choose to do internships, we make sure that they go to the best and the most appropriate place for their PhD thesis. A PhD in our school typically takes four to five years, and in this time, many of you will be producing beautiful results. We really try hard to make this an intellectually stimulating environment, and we think that this is key to the success of our students. As a result, um, our students often win awards like Google Fellowships or the EURSIS Award for Best European Thesis in Systems. What do our students do after they complete their PhD? About 65% of them go to the industry, either in big companies like IBM and Oracle or startups, and about 35% of them continue in academia or research labs. In recent years, EPFL graduates got faculty positions in places like Stanford, Cornell, Yale, the University of Michigan, or the University of Illinois. I will not go into administrative details about our PhD program because you'll hear a lot about that if you join us in September, but I would still like to give you some basic information. First, about the people who will be with you throughout your PhD journey. First of all, you will have a PhD advisor and potentially a co-advisor. These are the people who will guide you in defining the problems that you work on. And they will do other things for you, like help you pick your courses or help you plan your career. Choose them carefully. I often say that a PhD is, is like a marriage, that two people may be wonderful, but not meant to be together. The same is true about um, PhD advisor and student. Choose someone whom you not only academically admire, but whom you look forward to seeing every week. You will also have mentors during your first year. Uh, there will be an ED committee member who will act as your mentor, as well as a senior PhD student who will act as your buddy. And in subsequent years, there will be some other IC faculty member from a research area different from yours who will act as your mentor. Now, the role of the mentor will be to uh, give you advice with respect to everything outside research. For example, if there is some difficulty in your relationship with your PhD advisor, the mentor will be there to, and you will always be able to talk to them confidentially in order to sort things out. 
a few words about your first PhD year. When you arrive on campus, there will be two weeks of research seminars in which various IC faculty members will present to you their labs and the research that they do. And the goal will be to give you a detailed picture of the research landscape in our school. During your first year, you will need to complete two semester projects. And the goal will be to help you find a PhD advisor. Now, we strongly encourage you to do these two semester projects in two different labs. Even if you're very happy with the first lab that you pick and the lab is very happy with you, we still encourage you to pick a second lab for your second semester project just because it is a great opportunity to get a second perspective on doing research. Also, in your first year, you will need to take one depth course. This is a significant course uh, that depends on your particular research area and that you can choose from a given catalog of such courses. Finally, by the end of your first year, you need to pass your candidacy exam. This is an oral exam that is based on three research papers, which you can choose from among the existing literature with the help of your candidate PhD advisor. By the end of your first year, you will need to be affiliated with a lab, which is typically one of the two labs in which you did a semester project. I will now stop talking about administrative things and point you to the website that has all this information clearly laid out. If the website does not answer all your questions, please talk to your ED contact point and ask every single detail that you need to know. Maybe you will not choose where you will do your PhD based on the country or the city, but it's good to know that Switzerland is a fantastic place to live outside work. It is safe, it is clean, it has a rational political system and very polite people. Even in your office, you will be five minutes away from the lake where you can swim on a hot day or windsurf or kite surf on a windy day or just have a barbecue or football game with your friends. There are great opportunities for culture. The Montreux Jazz Festival is the world's second largest and takes place uh, over two weeks, just half an hour from here. The yearly Paleo Rock Festival lasts for six days draws in more than 200,000 people and, again, takes place half an hour from here. Lausanne has its own opera and, of course, so do Geneva and Zurich, which are easily reachable by train. Lausanne is a great place for foodies, with lots of restaurants, if you're into that. We live in a highly international environment, with about a third of the population being from abroad. And we are at the center of Europe only two hours away from every major European capital. It is not uncommon for students to say, hey, what are we doing this weekend? Let's just take the train to Paris or to Milan and come back on Sunday night. This brings me to the end of my overview. Please continue with the research presentations that you will find on the same channel. Do not hesitate to email us at edic at for any question you may have. And I hope to see you all in September.